Hi, this is Alfauzia Nihar from At Home Tuition. Welcome to our session today. The topic that we are going to discuss in our today's video is properties of definite integral. In this video, we will be looking at some important properties of definite integrals, which will be useful in evaluating such integrals effectively. We will also look at the proofs of each of these properties to gain a better understanding of them. Let me give you the list of properties of definite integrals. We have six important properties, the very basic properties that we use very often. And we have two more important properties that we will be using to check whether it is even function, odd function and two more properties. So here are the list. Please have a glance over this. Let's start from the first one. A to B f of x dx can be written as A to B f of t dt. You can change it. You can change from x to t any function. You can change the function like you can substitute or you can uh, use for example we used to take u equal to something so du equal to something and we just do the substitution no so the this property helps in doing that and second property in case if you're going to reverse the limit a to b f of x dx is equal to minus b to a f of x dx if you are going to change the limit upside down then you have to insert a negative sign before that also, you can say that if f of x dx a to a is equal to 0, because when you plug in the upper limit and subtract the lower limit, you'll just get 0, no? So, this is a very straightforward property. And third property is just splitting it into 2. Here, the limit is given as a to b f of x dx. You can just take any point in between this a to b. You can take any point in between this interval and split this integral into 2. For example, I am taking it as C. So, A to C, C to B. Does this make sense to you? And fourth property, A to B, F of X dx is equal to A plus B minus X. You can just add in between. So, this is a one of the important property. And fifth one, 0 to A, F of X. This can be written as A minus X. This is just very similar to the fourth property. And sixth property is 0 to 2A. This can be written as, this is a combination of this one and this one. So, 0 to a f of x dx, 0 to a, 2a minus x. This is just the property very similar to fifth. First three are the very new one and fourth, fifth, all these are related and you can derive one from the each other. It is just the combination of the other two, pro other few of the properties. Now, let's move on to the next property, seventh property. There are actually two parts in that. 0 to 2a f of x dx equal to 2 times 0 to a f of x dx. If this is true, only if this case is true. If f of x is equal to f of 2a minus x. You can also check this part when you are applying this property. And when the same thing is equal to negative of the function f of x, then 0 to 2a f of x dx will be equal to 0. Please compare these two parts. Hope you understand the difference between these two. So, these two properties are true only if this condition exists. And next last property is negative a to a. Seventh property is from 0 to 2a and eighth property is from negative a to a. This can be written as 2 times 0 to a f of x dx. This condition is possible only when it is an even function. Even function means f of x is equal to f of minus x, right? Same way. This is equal to 0. If it is an odd function, odd function means f of minus x is equal to minus of f of x. So, these are the list of the properties of definite integrals. Hope you are clear with these properties. Now, let us derive the proof of each of the properties. Proof of the first property, a to b f of x dx, a to b f of t dt. The proof for this property is not needed since simply by substituting x is equal to t, the desired output is achieved. Does this make sense to you? Okay, now let us see the property of second one. Here is the second property. Let i be the a to b f of x dx. Let us consider this as i. And f is the antiderivative of the function f. Then, by using the second fundamental theorem of calculus, hope you are familiar with this one because we just did these two videos previously. The second fundamental theorem of calculus says that i is equal to f of b minus f of a, which is also equal to 
by the using of fundamental theorem calculus. FTC means fundamental theorem of calculus. So f of b minus f of a. You can just rewrite this as taking the minus sign outside f of a minus f of b. So this is nothing but minus of yes, this thing. So b to a f of x dx. Also if a is equal to b, you can say that f of b minus f of a which is equal to f of a minus f of a which is equal to 0. That's the reason we are saying that integration a to a f of x dx is equal to 0. That's it for the second property. Hope you are clear with this one. This is very easy. You have to assume the L, uh, left hand side of this equation as i and then use the fundamental theorem of calculus. From that you can prove that the right side is true. Here is the third property as usual. Capital F is the antiderivative of the function small f. Then by using the second fundamental theorem of calculus we have I am just going to apply it for a to b, a to c and c to b. This is from the second fundamental theorem of calculus. We are applying it for a to b, a to c and c to b separately and I am marking each one as equation number 1, 2 and 3. Now adding equations 2 and 3 we will be getting so if I add the left sides of the equation 2 and 3 I get this. If I add the right sides f of c and f of c will get cancelled out. Am I right? And I will be left over with f of b minus f of a. Which is nothing but the left side of the equation according to the fundamental theorem of calculus. Am I right? So that's it for this property. Property number 3. Hope you are clear with this property. This is very simple. This is just like deriving one side of the equation to other side of the equation. Now property number 4, a to b f of x dx is equal to a to b f of a plus b, pl b minus x. For this one, I am going to assume this as t or x is equal to, ok let me show. I am just assuming this as t, if I just rewrite that, I will get x is equal to a plus b minus t. So in case if I find the dx, dx would be equal to minus dt or minus uh, positive dt is equal to minus dx. So this let this be equation number 4. I am just following the same serial number 1, 2, 3, 4. So let this be equation number 4. And also please observe that when x is equal to a, if x is equal to a, t equal to b. Am I right? If I plug in a here, a, a gets cancelled out and t will be equal to b. And when x is equal to b, t equal to a. Am I right? So a to b f of a, this can be replaced by a to b can be replaced by b to a when x is replaced by t therefore a to b f of x dx can be written as a to b f of t t is nothing but a plus b minus x dt so this is what we are getting from equation number 4 from property 2 we know that a to b f of x dx property 2 is just the minus sign so using that property also you can get this and you can also use property number 1 to get this property. All these properties are derivative from property 1, 2 and 3. Again and again we will be using the first three properties. Hope you are clear with this one. Here is the property number 5. Very similar to property number 4. I am going to take this as t. So if t is equal to a minus x or x is equal to a minus t, we will be getting dt equal to minus tx. Let this be equation number 5. So observe that when x is equal to 0, t will be equal to a or x is equal to a, t will be equal to 0. So integration 0 to a will be replaced by a to 0. When we replace x by t, therefore a to 0 f of x dx is equal to minus of a to 0. So this is very similar to property number 2. So using that property, we can prove this one. So from equation number 5 and property number 2. Also you can uh, use property number 1 to get this. All you have to do is assume this function, the function within the f, the parenthesis. Assume that as t and you can also rewrite that in terms of x and find that dt equal to negative dx or also you can write it as negative dt equal to dx. Both are same. So if you are assuming in that way, you have to use the property number 1 or 2 accordingly. That's it for this proof. Now let us move on to the 6th property. Proof of 6th property. Here is the 6th property. Hope you all are familiar with property number 3. The th property that we use for splitting. A to B to A to C, C to B. 
So I'm going to use that property, property number 3. Therefore, very similar to property number 3, I'm taking it as 0 to 2a because I want to prove this property 0 to 2a. So I'm taking a value in between this limit 0 to 2a, I'm taking a. So 0 to a and a to 2a. Let this be i1 and let this be i2. Let this be equation number 6. Can you follow so far? Now we are going to assume this as t. So let t equal to 2a minus x. If t equal to 2a minus x or x is equal to 2a minus t, we can say that dt equal to minus tx. Let this be equation number 7. So from property 2, applying the property number 2, we can say that 0 to a f of 2a minus t dt for i2. In the same way, if you are using property number 1, you will be getting 0 to a 2a minus x dx. So replacing the value of i2 in equation 6, you will be getting this property. Hence proved. In our next session, we can discuss the proof of property number 7 and 8. Also, we can discuss few examples on the application of each of this property. So, this is all about the list of the properties of definite integrals. In our next video, we can complete the other two properties, also the examples. In case if you get any query regarding this video, please let me know. See you in the next video. Have a great time ahead.